Liverpool 5, Sparta Prague 1. Yet again, Liverpool making it look easy as. Now, I knew Liverpool were going to win this game. I think we all knew Liverpool was going to win this game, but they were absolutely dominant. You can argue it could be 6-1 with the Salah goal being ruled out for some kind of offside and Liverpool were dominant from day dot but more importantly they've gone away they still had a few key players missing and they basically got the result they got the result they wanted I don't think they would have wanted a 2-1 when Liverpool I think they wanted 5-1 I think they wanted the leg done because that means unfortunately for me and Man United fans that they can pretty much rest all their key players ahead of the second leg so they're fully at it for the Manchester United game so even though I knew Liverpool was going to win I was like let's just hope they just scrape a win so that the tyres are done but the tie is done for Liverpool but I want to talk about how Harvey Elliott, hat-trick of assists, brilliant performance, how he's improving every year. I want to talk about Darwin Nunes. I want to talk about Kelleher and McAllister, four standout players today. And I do have a video coming out on McAllister probably tomorrow, so do subscribe for that. But let's talk about Harvey Elliott, a guy that maybe isn't getting the plaudit he deserves this season, and a guy that maybe we have to put in consideration for England if you look at current form. Southgate will pick Phillips and Henderson, but if we're looking at more deserving, you know, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, one of them probably deserves it. Um, you know, there's a few players there that definitely deserve it more than Carvin Phillips and, and Jordan Henderson, particularly Carvin Phillips. He's been bad. But Harvey Elliott today, and I saw this strong performance for Liverpool, created the joint most chances of four, completed 98% of his passes, his ball retention absolutely brilliant but two uh, uh got two assists um but three assists in the last three games apparently i thought he got three assists today they're saying he's got two assists for three in the last three games i think he got three assists today i'm not sure maybe i've misread that um four four goal contributions in the last five um and as they said his underlying expected assists finally coming through the season i want to talk about harvey elliott very very good for liverpool and he's been a guy where he's whether he's played on the right hand side whether he's played in midfield he's been very very good for liverpool this season now something i've noticed about harvey elliott is he's getting better and better and i think every season he's had at liverpool he's got better and better and harvey elliott's a player that gets a bit of stick um, because sometimes players are saying, you know, sometimes fans, Liverpool fans will be saying he's inconsistent or they're not seeing it, this and that. I don't understand how you can give a player who was 18, 19, 20, 21, not even yet, stick. When you are that young, you're going to be inconsistent. You're going to be raw. Ronaldo, who's, you know, from 18 to 21 at United, would frustrate fans. But fans would know what a good player that was there. Not comparing Harvey Elliott to Ronaldo in the slightest. But Harvey Elliott's got quite a bit of stick the last two seasons. I'm thinking he's so young. Like you've got to remember with young players, there's going to be inconsistencies, that they're going to have cookies, they're going to have baggins, they're going to be raw. But Harvey Elliott this season, I don't think he's had a bad game. When he's come off the bench, every time he's been brilliant. I think every match he's started, he's been brilliant, particularly the second half of the season, he's getting better and better and better. And what I see with Harvey Elliott is a player that gets better and better and better. He's going in the right direction. He's going to continue to get better. And his ceiling could be high. I think he's a workforce. I think he worked incredibly hard for Liverpool today. I don't think he gives up. I think he's the kind of player you want. He's versatile. He's played multiple different positions. But he's very good at breaking down a low block. And um, Sparta obviously going to play a low block versus Liverpool today. They're going to try and not concede many goals. And once you get the first goal, it will just tick and tick and tick because then they realise they have to attack you. Harvey Elliott is one of those guys where, as you can see with his assist numbers, his created chance numbers, I think he created four, 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 four chances today. He's very good at breaking down the low block, whether he's playing in the field, whether he's playing out wide. He's very good at picking out a pass, breaking those lines, getting between, finding space, getting a ball between players to find space, playing people into space or doing those quick one-twos and moving the ball around, around well and moving well to drive defenders. He's very good at breaking down low blocks, whether it's through a pass, whether it's through some movement, whether it's through a dribble, whether it's through runs. He's very good at breaking down low block. And I think when you're playing teams that are going to sit back and, and really hope that they can restrict you to not scoring, Harvey Elliott is very good in those games. But more importantly, going back to Harvey Elliott, he's, he's had fans turn on him um, that I've seen online. I, d I don't know what the Liverpool fan base really feel about him, but I've seen people turn him in the past. But I think if I was a Liverpool fan, I'd be quite happy with Harvey Elliott because I'd be seeing progress and I think progress is the most important thing with a young player are they getting better every season are they getting better are they regressing now a player that's definitely progressed this season of course is Darwin Nunes this guy is becoming unstoppable and I've said this even as a Manchester United fan I said Darwin Nunes is a good player I defended Hoyland Rasmus Hoyland when he wasn't scoring for United because I could see his link-up play was good his movement was good I could see that he dribbled I could see that he made the team better I could see that he had everything he wasn't getting the goals but he to be fair to Hoyland he was getting absolutely no service because our wingers could not cross the ball to him but with Darwin Nunes even when he wasn't scoring he was missing opportunities 
I can see, okay, this is an all-round player. This isn't just a guy that scores goals. This is a guy that is very good with his head, very good at controlling the ball, very good at holding up the ball. He can create, he can go out wide. His movement is very good, creating space, drawing out players. He's a very complete striker, Darwin Nunes, but he's absolutely become a monster lately. Look at those statistics. It's ridiculous. And the mad thing is, I feel like the way people spoke about Darwin Nunes this season, he was almost been spoke about as a flop early in the season. Look, yes, he's in Europa League and stuff, but 27 goal contributions this season is mad. He's got nearly 30 goal contributions this season. Considering some of the offsides and some of the chances he's missed, this guy could be this guy could be on like 35 goal contributions on track for 40, 50 goal contributions in all competitions. Darwin Nunes is getting better and better. And I think with Darwin Nunes, watching him, you know there's a good player in there. You know there's a really, really good player in there. It's just that finishing, it's just that staying on side. But he's scoring more, he's getting confident, you know, ahead of the Manchester City game. That is what Liverpool will want. Darwin Nunes in form, Darwin Nunes on it. And Darwin Nunes has been on it this season. He was dropped a little bit earlier on. It's like that's given him the boost. He's played out wide. He's been good. He's played in the middle. He's been good. But he makes good runs in behind. His shooting's improving. His finishing's improving. His all-round right game's good. And he has become an absolute unstoppable. Darwin Nunes is looking like the guy that I think Liverpool were like, this is what we signed. First season, I think he was good, but he was going to be roaring. He needs time settling, but I think he was good last season. And I think this season, he's been really, really good. I think he's been a new level of good and really progressed. But there's one player that's caught my eye, mostly for Liverpool the second half of the season. So much so that I'm actually going to do a video on him. And it's, I've already filmed the video. I filmed the video yesterday. But that is McAllister. Alexis McAllister, I've got a video coming out analysing him and why I think he would be the key if Liverpool win the title this season. Now, this is just... General statistics, penalty one, three chances created, 65 touches, five recoveries, four or five grounds, one, one goal, one assist. McAllister has been fantastic for Liverpool. Now, he started as a six. Early in the season for Liverpool, he started as a six. And he was so good as a six that a lot of Liverpool fans I saw saying, do we need a six? Could McAllister be the long-term answer? Then Endo came in and Endo really came about. And then they're like, oh, wow, like Endo is a really good player here. This is, and then Endo has been phenomenal. To then the point Endo's gone six and McAllister's gone eight. And McAllister's gone as an eight. And McAllister as an eight, once Endo's come in, these last 10 games has hit a new level of good because McAllister is in his natural role. McAllister is defensively good enough to play as a six. He's such an all-round player. And as I said, the Argentine player, he knows how to do the fundamentals like it's second nature to him. That's how I describe it. He can pass, he can move, he can play like it's second nature to him. And sometimes I get frustrated watching Man United because I feel like, there's four or five players that, are, but to be fair, most of our squad, sometimes I think, can you not pass the ball? We've got certain players that can pass the ball, like Delo, Delo Mayno, who are very comfortable on the ball. And we've got other players that can't string two passes of the ball without giving it away. And they're so frustrating to watch. But when you watch McAllister, he is one of those guys that's so technically good that those fundamentals of football are second nature to him, passing, moving, he doesn't even need to think about it. But he's also so technically good that he can do things that not many players can do. Only maybe Thiago is capable of it in the Liverpool squad. And that is his ability to get between the lines, to find the space. And when he's playing as an eight, he gets between the midfield and defensive line of the opposition. He finds space. He can get the ball in high pressure scenarios with players running at him. But he keeps the ball really well. He uses his body really well. And he uses his body to shield of opponents, turn with his back away from goal forward. And as he does that, he scans. His ability to scan the area and pick out the right pass and pick out the right move is what you're seeing from McAllister in this eight role. Three chances created today, and he's really, really impressive. Not only is he a creative player, you know, De Bruyne's a creative player, Bruno Fernandes is a creative player, now we're seeing McAllister create a player, but he does something, and obviously he doesn't take as risky passes as Bruno and, and De Bruyne, and he's not quite that advanced. But for a player that's been playing such a creative role lately, his ball retention statistics are very, very good. His ability to keep the ball, his ability to play the ball is very good. And I've got a video coming up on McAllister and why he's key for Liverpool. But he covers a lot of ground. He's got the mentality. He can press. But he's a very good player at creating chances since he's gone further up the pitch. He can pick out those passes, whether it's long playing over the fence, whether it's short. He can break the lines. He can progress the ball. He's got what you want in a top midfielder, and I've ex I'll explain that in my in my video tomorrow in more detail. So do subscribe for that. But he's become an amazing signing for Liverpool. So I wanted to give him credit where credit's due. Kelleher again really really stepped up for Liverpool. I I, I thought that Allison was going to be a big loss, and it obviously is a big loss for Liverpool. But Kelleher stepped up, and I think the thing that is quite infuriating as a rival is 
they get all these players injured and these other players are stepping up. Connor Bradley's injured. Alison Ginger, you're like, whoa, like the best right back and the best goalkeeper in the world are injured. Ah, Connor Bradley's been brilliant. Not Connor Trent's injured, sorry. And 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 of course, Alison's injured. So Connor Bradley and Keller have come in. But Connor Bradley and Keller have been all, almost as good. I mean, you can argue Connor Bradley's been as good as Trent in that role. He's He's been fantastic. And I think that Liverpool, unfortunately, have been fantastic this season. I knew they were going to win that game. I knew they were going to dominate the game to the point. I didn't actually watch the first 20, 30 minutes of that game. And that's where the match reaction was late because I thought, well, I better have a little look at the first 20, 30 minutes of the game. Not that I really wanted to, because I was like, that will give me a bit more uh, clarity on my report. So I can be accurate. But I think Liverpool in the Europa League. I don't want them to. Anything can happen in knockout football. But they look a level ahead of the rest of it, don't they? But you do, you do. You look a lot better than everyone else. Please do hit that like button if you have not already. Subscribe if you're new. Thank you for watching. Bye.